what is going on everybody welcome back to the channel uh today's video is going to be a full review i'm going to be telling you how much money i got into this thing everything that is done it's been requested by several people to make a video talking about the money it costs to have a truck like this uh i'm gonna figure up my monthly what i spend to run this truck you know the maintenance the repairs how they average out uh, i'm gonna go over all the performance upgrades i'm gonna go over all the cosmetic stuff the chonky boggers that aren't so chonky anymore uh, I'll tell you how long they've lasted and what I think of these Nittos uh, and the wheels and all that stuff. So I'll give you a review of everything that's done to this truck. Uh, let's pull it on back. Let's get it cranked up. I'm not going to do another exhaust shot. You guys have seen and heard that enough times. Uh, there's a new dent. We'll get into that uh, later on in the video. But let's crank her up. So I've got the entire book. Let's see if we can get the thing to focus right. I've got the entire book and everything so I can show you guys exactly what I've spent on this truck and what I got in it. So let's crank her up. Wait for that light to go off. Still cranks right up. Now, as you guys can see right here, 436,130 miles. Uh, I did the last oil change at, I was a little past due, obviously. I was at like 433.3. So we're at, next one's due at 438. And you can kind of get a rough idea how many miles I'll put on my truck right there. So I was at 425,500 on January 26th, and on 5-2, I was at 433. So I went 8,000 in four months. So, you know, it ain't bad, it ain't terrible. But as you can see, I got my stupid sticker bomb up there that I've kind of grown out of. Not a huge fan of it anymore. But we got our tuner over here. I don't know, let's just pull it around back. We'll get into all this stuff. So we will step out while it's running so you guys can hear everything. Uh, we're not gonna do the review with the entire time with the truck running, but I'll pop the hood, let you guys see everything. Uh, you won't be able to see blow by accurately because the truck has to be hot, obviously. Um, here's the way she sounds with a four inch turbo back. With an eight inch tip. All right, let's cut it off and I'll give you guys a rundown of everything. Just in case you care, even though it's cold, it ain't gonna be accurate. I mean, that's basically how it looks hot. I mean, it, it don't have any pressure coming out. I mean, we'll get into it. Uh, the door dinger don't work, which I love. Um, so starting out inside here. So what you've got here is your 436,000 mile 7.3. Uh, we're going to get into the ugly factors and everything. We're going to get into the real nitty gritty. So we've got some rust issues breaking out. Uh, that wasn't there when I got the truck. Am I worried about it? Not at all. Do I care? Not at all. Am I going to sell the truck? No. Do I care about value? No, not at all. Uh, this is about the worst of the seat tear. Uh, this is it. The back seat's in really good shape. There's one. Uh, in 02, they come out with automatic door locks is automatically locked uh back here it's pretty good shape i mean it's decent for this many miles and years uh there's that rip there which is from a dumb friend of mine throwing a claw hammer uh as you can see the back seat's really dirty and nasty i need to wash and clean this truck up but uh uh one thing annoying that i don't like about it is these armrests see they just they don't they're stripped out so that don't work so interior wise this truck has held up very good for the miles uh the dash is fine all the vents are good uh all of this is good uh the only thing here is the shifter broke which is common to where you know to one off that thing up there don't work uh door panels and everything's just fine i did break this but that was my me trying to get this off see i broke the flat clip trying to pull up down here when all i have to do is pick up up here and it pulls right out i didn't know that but as you can see that's pretty much it for the interior uh i put led lights right here and up there so now we've got led interior lights which is pretty nice uh we've got the steering cover which you know it's, it is what it is i mean to wore out old truck you got your hydro tuner here tuned by 1023 diesel which i believe is about 510 dollars i got it all wrote down i'll show you uh so that's now getting into performance we got a hydro by 1023 that was like the first thing i did well actually the straight pipe i did a four inch turbo back straight pipe first and then shortly after that, I did this tuner. Uh, it's got six settings. You've got uh, my number one setting is heavy tow. 
Number two is high idle. Three is medium tow. Four is um, economy. Five is your Cummins killer tune. And six is ludicrous. We run on six all the time because we're just, you know, bad like that. So we run on six all the time. Um, which, did it cause transmission problems? Yes, absolutely. Uh, it lasted about 12,000 miles, which is impressive. And then the transmission fell out from under it. Broke the output shaft in two. Uh, went and had a local shop. Rebuild the old one with some heavier duty stuff. Which has been fine now for over 32,000 miles. Uh, the torque converter, the brand new torque converter lasted about 8,000 miles. And blew in the sand, as you guys saw on the Carolina Beach trip with these tires. Four wheel drive high, reverse. Wah! Blew the torque converter out. You know, whatever. But, uh, you know, it was alright. So, transmission's been fine. Uh, that cost $2,850 to rebuild and do everything. Um... That irritates me right there. See, I got a brand new belt on there and a brand new pulley. Why is that still wearing like that? Anybody tell me? I think it's my uh, harmonic balancer, which is about to get fixed. Uh, anyways, then we did, uh, shortly after the tuner exhaust and all that, I think right after the transmission went out, the turbo went out. So I picked up that stock turbo for 100 bucks. Uh, it was still good. My other one was shot, like, uh, later we came to find out. But that one there got rebuilt with the eBay special parts. Uh, the EBPV delete, it's got the wicked wheel knockoff in it. You know, I don't know how many blade it is or nothing like that. Uh, the EBPV delete is pretty nice. Uh, we did this cold air intake, just cheap $60 kit, might have been even cheaper than that. Uh, I left the other filter on there until it was dirty. I replaced it with this KN, well, actually, a different one. I had a bigger KN on here, a little bit bigger, and then I went and replaced it, and I actually got a little smaller one. Uh, but with this filter right here being a little bit smaller than the other one. When you're inside the truck giving it throttle, I mean, this thing, it screams. You can hear that turbo very well with the way this truck's set up. I mean, this thing really just whistles. I might go down the road and show you guys at the end of the video. But uh, you got your typical oil leaks. Um, it really isn't bad for a 7.3. It doesn't actually leak anything, like, on the ground. The only leaks that leaks on the ground is from the drain plug. And that was after I changed the oil. But, like, once I fix that drain plug, the truck doesn't drip on the ground, which really amazes me. Because if you look in here, I mean, it's all oily and nasty everywhere, but I think it all burns off before it hits the ground. See, that's all coming from the ICP sensor, which is getting ready to get fixed. Um, like I said, blow-by is literally pretty much non-existent in this truck. Um, coolant level has been about the same since I got it two years ago. I haven't touched it. But just so you know, the other day, it was actually leaking coolant. Um, it's done it. That was the first time I've seen it do it, and I haven't seen it do it since. But I'm not sure where it's coming from, but this hose running from underneath this thing right here to the bottom of the radiator down there, I think that's where it's coming from. Because it looked like it was running down the fan shroud and going out on the ground. It leaked a puddle of me about that big. but And then it quit leaking, and I hadn't done it since. So I don't know what to think about that. Uh, so is that it performance-wise? Yeah, I think so. This, truck, this truck's pretty much bone stock. I mean, it's got stock injectors and all that stuff. And everybody that rides in it, you know, it's not fast by any means, but it's pretty stout for what it is. And compared to most 7.3s, this truck will get up and go pretty good. Um, my dad's 7.3 over there. We'll go over there and walk it and look at it. Uh, it's got 180 injectors in it, 180 over 100 injectors, you know, blah, 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 stuff like that. So that truck's pretty stout, but still, this one right here keeps up with it just fine. Uh, I think that's it for performance. Repairs, uh, we've done a lot of those. It's got a whole new AC system on it. Uh, which needs to be gone through again. Something's wrong with it. It's like it blows cold when you're idling, but when you go down the road, it you, you just you lose your AC and it kind of makes a noise. But uh, we've done that. Um, pulley tensioner, idler pulley, new belt like three times, but we still got a problem somewhere, obviously. Um, we've done, we have not done batteries, which is absolutely amazing. These are from August of 17, so I'm really impressed with them because they've been killed twice and they're still going. There's that clip that I was needing the other day from when I changed the air filter. Uh, we did the alternator in August of 19, like shortly after I got the truck. Uh, what else have I done under here? Uh, not much that I could think of. Uh, repairs, yes, they do. The list goes on. I did uh, all new ball joints, upper and lower, Moog. I did one locking hubs. I had to put new hubs with the wheel bearings in it and both axles on both, side, both sides. That was $3,000. That was actually my biggest repair. When I first got the truck, I had $1,700 put into that and some other things. New shocks up front and back. Um, uh, new axle seals. Got the four-wheel drive wiring harness re repaired because the four-wheel drive didn't work. Um, 
what else did I do? Oh, I did a leveling kit. Um, at the same time, I did my window tent a while back when I first got it. Uh, the leveling kit, I did just the little spacer springs underneath the stock lace spring. And that lasted a while, but I went through a ditch with mud, come down a hill, hit a bump, bam, bam. And when I left, my tires started rubbing. I was like, that's not normal. This truck normally never rubs. So I get out, my truck's sitting like two inches lower on this side over here. And the bottom leaf spring actually broke. Cause you know, factory, they only have two leaves. So I was running on one leaf spring for a long time. Yeah, it was dangerous, but I wasn't too worried about it. Uh, so what I ended up replacing with, and notice the shocks are different colors, I replaced it with the Rough Country leveling spring. So there is no more shims or anything. It's just one big leaf spring. Um, it has the adjustable track bar as well. I did that at the same time. Um, I had to put these Power Stroke Elms on here because I didn't have them. Uh, those were like 70 bucks straight from Ford. Uh, what else did I do up front here? I can't think. I did a... I'm just kind of going over everything now. I did these he headlights and I got away with... These are like some cheap ones. I know from Ford they're expensive. They won't last. I mean, I know they're going to look like crap in a few years. Did the smoked cab lights, the LEDs. LEDs. And I, th I think I did all that for about 250 bucks. Uh... We got the stock grill in it still. Um, coming around this way. We put this den in it. I'll give you guys a rundown of all the dents. I accidentally pushed my friend Dolph into that and I felt it. And I thought it was fine, but it actually ended up creasing it a little bit right there, which sucks. So I put that den in it. Uh, coming along this side. We're just fine. Oh, and one thing, repairs. I've had to do brakes on this truck a bunch of times. I just did new front rotors and pads. And calipers, actually. No, not calipers. But I've done rear calipers probably twice and pads several many times. But it seems like less than 20,000 miles I get out of pads and front and rotors and stuff. Uh, it doesn't help. I don't have trailer brakes and all that good stuff. Uh, coming around here, we got the 8-inch tip. I paid $30 on eBay for. It's ovaled. I would tell you how that happened, but I can't tell you because it's like top secret. Uh, bad news. Um, this day right here is the newest one. Makes me really mad. Uh, that trailer over there with the toolbox on it right there. Uh, I was backing around. This is during the fuel shortage we had down here in the south because everybody's stupid. And uh, I was turning around to try and get to a diesel pump. And I didn't even notice it. I'm assuming this is when it happened because I noticed it the next day. I didn't even know or feel it. or I don't even really know how it happened. But And I jacked out that trailer, long story short. Um, right here, we got the best hitch of all time, in my opinion, for you know normal use. Uh, we got the tow and stow receiver hitch from BMW. Uh, I think that's considered a 9-inch drop very very nice i've loved that hitch the entire time i've had it uh, right here is the most annoying reason why i don't have trailer brakes i've got this old-fashioned little round plug but i just spent 164 dollars and ordered one from ford because this is a factory one and when the factory ones they have a plug you just plug into a harness so i can rip all this out and just plug my seven way and four way in so i did order that for 170 bucks uh so that should be in hopefully it all works because there is a trailer brake controller already in this truck right there as you guys can see so that's fine also there's another uplift or uh, some sort of toggle switch right here don't know what it is i'd imagine it was a light bar or maybe a who knows maybe manual glow plug relay at one time i, who, I don't know but uh you know he's back to here so love that hitch plugs coming hopefully we'll have lights and everything will work i would try and figure out how to get this one in the bed to be changed out but uh this one's not working anymore, so I'm going to try and track down the wiring harness and probably just wire another seven-way right into that. Or leave that. Leave this for when I need that style plug. Uh, we do have the gooseneck ball in here. As you guys may have seen before, I had that wood box, which I need to take to the burn pile in here. But it, it fell apart, and then we got this traction supply toolbox. People, don't waste your money on these. This is a $400 toolbox. Stuff is just broke right off. Look. It's not even old. 11 of 18. Made in Mexico. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, I got everything crammed in there right now. It's, I mean, it ain't gonna work. And it's just cheap junk. I mean, absolute garbage. So I would not recommend that box. Don't buy any box. I'll tell you what I did. I ended up getting angry. And I went and... Let me just show you. So, I was tired of not having enough space. Because I didn't like carrying two toolboxes at all times. It's horribly annoying. So, what we got here, let's pull this tape out. This is right here. So... I went and I ordered the biggest and baddest, most expensive weather guard toolbox that they make. It's 27 inches from the lid to there. So our new toolbox will come out seven and a half inches past our old one. 
it's a weather guard you guys know weather guard if you know is very very top notch good quality they have a lifetime warranty they are made in usa and the quality is amazing so it was an 850 dollars toolbox but if you guys want to see a review on it let me know uh I'll, I'll show you it's 27 inches 18 something deep and i mean 15.3 cubic inches cubic feet of storage is pretty impressive and the lid is very quality the only thing i'll miss is this and it's not a low profile box but i don't care about that anymore i just want something good quality um the back suspension wise has been left alone completely stock it's just the original stock lace springs kind of been whatever uh we do have a turnover ball so you can turn it over that i believe it's a buyer's ball uh, i think i remember seeing a tag on here but it come off I haven't pulled a gooseneck a whole lot with this truck, but I have a few times. Uh, dents. We got this dent right here in the back. I won't tell you how that one happened either. Uh, coming around this way, no other dents, I don't think. Minor dent right here in the fender. You can kind of see right there. That was literally me leaning on it to look at something. I mean, that was just that stupid. Uh, bumper, I plan on doing a ranch hand. My dad put one on his 21 power stroke, which I love. Uh, I just put the cat tag back on because the uh, this mount broke off and went missing. Actually, I filmed a video putting that back on. And I filmed a video yesterday, but I deleted everything because it wasn't that great. And the plans fell through because my friend was going to get a truck. And then it just, I don't think he's ever going to do it. So he chickened out. So we ended up not going, so I didn't make a video out of anything. Uh, but overall, and just so you know, as embarrassing as it is, this engine is not the original engine in this truck. Uh, I'm not sure exactly why. Uh, I don't know when it was changed, but I kind of have a rough idea. Because on the side, it has an oil capacity for a 6.0 and a 6.4. So if it lists 6.4 on the side, that means it had to have been done after 2007, late 2007, when the 6.4s were out, you know, in 2008, 9, and 10. Um, so that has had to have been when this engine was done. So I don't know why it went out. Uh, conspiracy theory that I have is that when... I'll, I'll get that later. When... This truck was wrecked in 2009, I show. See how this fender and hood are peeling? I think that was when it was where it was repainted because it said front left impact. So that hood and fender have been repainted before, uh, making me think that's why this has happened. So what I'm thinking is when they got in that impact, maybe, just maybe it totaled the motor out. I mean, I don't know that for a fact, but just maybe. That might have something to do with it. Um, but right here, as you guys can see, uh, these tires, these are the 35-1250 R17 Nitto Trail Grapplers. And I actually got them a year ago yesterday. Uh, May 29th is when I got these tires. Something around there. As you can see, they are basically shot uh, one year later. So we're at 436. I had 412. So they got 24,000 miles on them. See, these ones are doing better. Uh, still not perfect. Uh, these ones over here. Uh, a little bit all right. Chunks taken out of it. I mean, so 24,000 miles is what I got out of these. But don't think that's the tire's fault. I really think I would have got easily twice that if I would have taken care of them. Uh, they did wear down pretty quick from the beginning anyways, though, just normally, from normal driving. They have been through some burnouts. They have been through some fast driving on curves and all that. So I don't have a fair review for these tires. But will I run them again? Probably not. I mean, the price of these tires is just so high. And... Yes, they look cool. That's the best looking tire I ever made, in my opinion. But honestly, let's be real. When you get a F-350 truck that weighs 8,000 pounds stuck in the mud, I promise you, these tires are not going to help you at all. Now, they have impressed me with mud before. Like they, they, I think they do make a little bit of a difference. But if you get stuck with these tires, I mean, if you get stuck with an all-terrain, you're probably going to be stuck with these. I mean, I never, ever got this truck stuck with my other tires. I mean, it was never a problem. I mean, these tires are basically for looks. Going down the road, they don't make a whole lot of road noise, so they're definitely an alright tire. Definitely a good tire. Um, the wheels, I, I like the wheels. I love the looks of them. They are expensive, but I have one major complaint. This lip. I know there's no way around it, really, to make it look the same, but this lip right here holds water, irritates me, holds dirt, and scratches your powder coat, so... That's my only complaint is that these wheels kind of get kind of crummy and ugly pretty quick. Uh, the finish on them is pretty good, but I don't care what kind of finish you got. It's not going to hold up dirt and sand going a million miles an hour like that all the time. 
I will say these wheels have been buried in mud up to the center cap and spun and they're not even scratched like besides that rim so overall tires wheels love the combo uh, i'm gonna keep these wheels or i might potentially think about running um those stocks right there i thought about getting those and putting a 35 terra grappler or ridge grappler on them but i'm not sure yet if i want to do a ridge grappler or just go terra grappler uh best bang for the buck in my opinion is a terra grappler yeah the ridge grappler looks good but it is just it's not going to perform like a terra grappler and this truck rides so many miles and just it, it's just a lot of road driving there's no point in having a fancy tire like this that i'm just gonna end up ruining and wearing out really quick you know no point in it uh, i did have a problem with cheap lug nuts i had some cheap locking lugs that rams one gave me uh located in mooresville north carolina and yeah they might have been over torqued but a good lug nut will break a stud before it breaks a lug nut and uh they rounded off or they broke off and left a flat spot so i had to drill i mean it, it was a huge ordeal but we, we got it all straight now we got all these gorilla lugs on there pretty good quality i believe what else what else what else uh oh here's another dent i forgot this tailgate was pretty cherry when i bought the truck uh that right there my friend luke when i basically when i first got the truck we had a pair of forks for a tractor in the back of here and this bed's very clean by the way because i just cleaned it we we're trying to change forks and we couldn't get the pin on that side to line up so we tried to stick a rock over here on this side trying to get this side to move well it didn't move it just pushed the rock down and bananaed my tailgate which is probably one of the most annoying dents in this truck because look at that big gap I mean, I lose, I've probably lost tons of stuff through there. I've lost straps. I mean, I've just lost everything through there. My chain has fallen out before twice. I've caught it like at the last second because I hear sparks and somebody pulls me over. Uh, reverse lights don't work. I don't know why. They never have since I got the truck. But it's got that pod under there. It's had since day one. So that's kind of nice. I'd like to get it. I might just chop that out of there so it doesn't look so ugly and maybe run like two pods in the bumper on both sides two on each side so we have like extremely bright reverse lights something like that just for the heck of it i like to do a ranch hand but then again i don't really know if i care to do that because i'm kind of trying to save money for other stuff i don't really need to waste my on that because this truck looks all right i mean it, it's all right it does do a lot of work not as much as that one over there but it does work it works very hard so now i'm going to go on the list i'm going to go over everything and kind of figure out a rough estimate of what it cost to own this truck so stay tuned for more so right here is a list it's 2002 accessories you guys can pause this i don't feel like going through here and listing off everything um here's all the accessories five percent window tent and windshield strip leveling kit and track bar that was the first one power stroke emblem four inch mbrp straight pipe eight inch black tip Hydra by 1023. I ran some 18 by 10 moto metals. LED interior lights. Used Kenwood radio. Seat covers. LED lights. Interior. Two kicker used competition 12 inch subs. Steering wheel cover, which I don't have subs in here anymore. 17 inch method MV. 35 inch Nitto. 52920. 2560. 412L. Uh. There's my headlights. That was, yeah, 240 like I said. Third brake light, Roxford audio, door speakers, 100 bucks. Uh, let me add all this up, and I'll put it at the bottom. So for accessories, we have $56.95. Uh, that's all just nonsense. All that. It's all this stuff. Uh, initial cost of the truck, I paid $6,500 for. We'll add all this up. So that's just that's just accessories right there and the truck's pretty much stock so tells you how quick money goes uh so moving on to the service uh we'll add all this up to you for the heck of it um as you can see wiper blades 54 alignment 74 self oil change i've always changed oil myself you see the miles of difference there kind of go a little too far um let's see we got twelve thousand miles on that oil change but you don't need to worry about that uh, the reason there's another oil change that quick, 406 to 408, I'm pretty sure that's when the turbo went out, so I did a break in right away. I did the K&N air filters at 413. Another oil change, rotated tar, fuel filter. I've only changed the fuel filter once. Probably should do it again. That was at 416,000. Uh, wiper blades, rotated tars, 
oil change, rear brake pads, which I quit right in there because I started doing it in repairs, I think. I shouldn't do that. I should put it in here, but I do. I accidentally do it in repairs. Uh, oil change and tires at 433 So, as you can see that, there's the cost of all that. Uh, let me add all that up real quick. So, now, just in maintenance, we have $726. And the reason that oil change is a little bit more... Where is it? Oil change. The reason the oil change was 73 instead of 68, I ran a Motocraft uh, oil filter. And if you guys don't know, I spent $800 in oil almost. Uh, I bought all the Rotella they had before the price went up. And I bought a bunch of 7.3 filters. Oh, uh, that's repairs page two. We had to rewrite page one. So right here's repairs. This is what counts. Power steering pump, axle seals, Monroe shocks, tie rod ends, four-wheel drive wiring, rear rotors and pads, rear caliper. Oh, that's separate. Okay. All that was $17.71. Rear rotors and pads. You guys can pause like a price. I mean, I'm going to put all this together. Rear pads, rotors and pads, rear caliper, 7.3 emblems, alternator, power steering pump lines. You'd think they would have done that when they did the power steering pump, but no. Front left caliper, rotor and front pads, belt, Curry's built transmission, pulley tensioner and green belt, starter, EBPV delete, turbo rebuild, front rough country let leaf springs level, that was when I broke mine, torque converter warranty repair, worn locking hubs, upper ball joints, Estimated lower ball joints, wheel bearings, hub, worn locking hubs again, uh, front axle seals, front axles, rotors, pads, U joints, 3227. Uh, that's page two, or page one. So let's go back here to page two. This is a continuation. Uh, you got right rear caliper and rear pads, right rear lug nuts and stud issues fixed again, idler pulley, all new gorilla lug nuts, middle rear U joint, other two rear U joints, OEM rear man. Reman gearbox, uh, SD, se severe duty Wagner pads and rotors front. Uh, we just did those. And I realized I didn't put the carrier bearing in here, I don't think. Let me add up all the repairs. This is what people are going to worry about right here. So I've had this truck just a smidge over two years. So what we've got here is, this is the initial cost of the truck. This is accessories. This is maintenance. This is repairs. $11,100 almost. Um... So, within two years, this is what it costs per year. That's repairs. $5,500 per year. I've put, this truck had $389,000 when I got it. So, I've put 47, roughly, 47,000 miles. Let's write that down. So, we've got 47,000. Okay, that's the miles. So, that divided by two is what? 23,500, something like that. I don't know. Uh, so, 23,000, miles per year. So, it cost $5,500 in repairs. Yes, some self-inflicted, some from my stupidity, some from wear and tear. Natural. natural. Uh, this is the total cost of the repairs, um, maintenance, and uh, accessories. $17,519. That's how much I've put into this truck. That includes with the truck. So, I've got a total of over $24,000 into this, this setup right here. Uh, that is, I don't remember what that was. That's the total, uh, divided in two years. I think that's the 17, 5, 19 divided by two, 87, 59. That includes my accessories over the last two years. So if you guys understand all that, uh, hope you guys do. Uh, I'm sorry this video might seem long and boring and long, but this is what people ask for is a detailed review of what it costs to build this truck. Okay. So that's what I did gave you guys a great review so now that's it for basically that's pretty much everything i could think of i gave you guys a full rundown of absolutely everything so take it how you want to i'd say this truck's been a pretty good truck to me um let me know down in the comments if you guys want to see more truck videos and what you guys want to see like when i work on it would you like to see videos of me doing that would you like to see videos of me changing the oil you know putting in a new grill when i do it you know changing the headlights uh everything so we're about to leave go get me some good breakfast it's sunday memorial day weekend um let's walk over here and look at that truck hope you guys enjoy what i did with this truck here um yeah let me know down below you want to see more also as i'm walking over here and doing this uh at the end of this video there's going to be extra clips i'm going to do you know videos of that truck over there from the day i bought it i'm going to do you know videos just extra sound stuff couple things to kind of show you guys performance stuff stuff like that here's a 70 
74 Bronco. We got 302 V8. Runs and drives. Uh, so this right here is my dad's truck. Uh, we're not going to do too much of a review on it. That'll be a separate video if you guys don't see it, but we'll get up close with it. Uh, these are what I'm talking about. See, these headlights are two and a half years old. I'm not sure if that's the same brand of the ones I got, but as you can see, two and a half years is about all they wrote. Junk. Uh, we're not going to go into all the review of everything it's done. I mean, you can kind of see. Uh, window, don't ask. Don't ask. The truck just had a ton of money put in it. And still, window, no window. Dang, focus. So, as you guys can see there, 693000 Now, I know I've always said 735 The truck reads 693 Okay? Uh, this truck's had 35s on it its whole life. So it's been off pretty bad. So I'd be considered safe to say at least 730,000 on there. If you guys don't want to count it like that, then that's fine. Uh, 693 is still a very impressive number. It's got the original engine in it. Uh, transmission, about the fifth one on here. I'm trying not to go into too much detail on it because we want to save it for a separate review if you guys are interested. But I will give you a sneak peek of this engine bay. And believe me, guys, you will be impressed with this engine bay. As you guys can see here, this truck has 735,000 miles on it. Would you guys look at how clean this engine bay is? Now, new shocks, I mean, look at that hood. You had to pull it down. The only thing that would have impressed me more is if you would have replaced this cracked coolant reservoir. Uh, other than that, you replaced stuff that just is, we got a good mechanic. I'm just gonna say that, but. The good mechanic also can't get the window to go up. Yeah, that's besides the point. I'm not bashing him. I mean, I love our mechanic. We got a great mechanic. Very great. Uh, this tire went flat. Toyo. First ever time we had a tire fail us. It was one of those Toyos. So we had to go put a Nitto on there, you know, get us home. 35, 1250s. As you guys can see, they're about wore better, better than mine. Paid $30 for that whole tire. I should have went and bought the whole set and put it on those uh, stocks over there. But, uh, We'll save that review for later. Separate video. Now, guys, I hope this video didn't bore you too much. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, please leave a like and comment and subscribe. Definitely leave a like and subscribe, though. That's most important. Uh, I feel like I've put a lot of time today like into this video. This is a long video, so it'll take me some time to edit it. I'm not going to do a whole lot of editing, so it's not going to be a big deal. It's kind of a slow-paced video, I know, but I've got one video on the truck with like 15,000 views, so it kind of did pretty good. Hopefully, this one does because it will meet demand. And people wanted to see this, so uh, I think I deserve a like for it. So please leave a like, comment down below what you guys want to see. Enjoy these extra clips I throw in here at the end, and stay tuned for the next one. Let me know. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Don't forget, um, we're going to crank her up and give you guys a little bit of a sound video. I like to film my outers before I'm actually done with the video. We've got a clear going. We're going to give you guys a full acceleration. Just keep in mind, tune, EBPV, delete, turbo. As you guys can see, it, it, I mean, it gets up for being a 7.3. And it smokes quite a bit. You guys can hear that turbo as well. So she gets up pretty good. And smokes. It seems to be what all you guys like. So I'll roll up this passenger window and try and give you guys a little bit more of that turbo. this tune ludicrous uh, turned up all the way let me get over here I'm gonna loop back to Kings Mountain and eat take a left of this light here's you guys another full acceleration uphill I see how slow it is you can that turbo a little bit Turbine. 
45, no, 75, not bad. We're not doing anything illegal. So, I mean, you guys can hear that turbo. I mean, it sounds pretty daggum good for what it is. So, let's see if we can get a little bit of spool up, bog it down, lug it. Quite a bit of turbo. You gotta hear that blow off pretty loud. Damn crew cab forwards in their seat about slapping. I don't know what I'm gonna do about it.